So that will be the integral from 0 to 1 of, okay, let's try to figure it out. So what is f? f at a point x, y is minus y comma x. But if I take the point where I am at time t, then x is t and y is t squared. Okay, so here I plug x equals t, y equals t squared. That will give me negative t squared and t. Okay, so here I will put negative t squared t dot product. What is the velocity vector? Well, dx dt is just 1, dy dt is 2t, so the velocity vector is 1 and 2t dt. Okay? So now we have to continue calculation. We get integral from 0 to 1 of what is this dot product? Well, it's negative t squared plus 2t squared. I get t squared. Well, maybe I'll write it. Negative t squared plus 2t squared dt, that ends up being integral from 0 to 1 of t squared dt, which you all know how to integrate and get one third. Okay? So that's the work done by the force along this curve. Yes? Did you get the negative t squared plus 2t squared over here? Well, I got it by just taking the dot product between the force and the velocity. Okay? Sorry, that's, in case you're wondering, things go like this. Okay, any questions on how we did this calculation? No? Yes? Ah, why can't you just do f dot dr? Well, soon we'll be able to. We don't know yet what dr means or how to use it as a symbol, okay? Because, you know, we haven't said yet. I mean, see, this is a d vector r. That's kind of a strange thing to have. And certainly r is not a usual variable. I mean, we have to be careful about, you know, what are the rules? What does this symbol mean? So, I mean, we're going to see that right now. And then we can do it actually in a slightly more efficient way. But you can just use, I mean, R is not a scalar quantity. R is a position vector, right? So you can't integrate F with respect to R. We don't know how to do that. Okay. So, oh, yes, sorry. I can't see people up there because of the spotlights, but yes. If I were to do... I still can't hear you, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, if I took a different trajectory from the origin to that point one, one, what would happen? Well, the answer is I would get something different. Okay, so for example, let me try to convince you of that. For example, say that I chose, say I chose to instead go like this and then around like that then, you know, first I wouldn't do any work because here the force is perpendicular to my motion, and then I would be going against the force all the way around, so I should get something that's negative. Okay, even if you don't see that, uh, just, you know, accept that phase value, what I'm going to say now, the value of the line integral in general depends on how we got from point A to point B. And that's why we have to compute it by using the parametric equation for the curve. It really depends on what curve you choose. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yes. Ah, so yes, what happens when the force inflects the trajectory? Well, then actually you'd have to solve a differential equation telling you how the particle moves to find what the trajectory is. Uh, so that's something that would, you know, be a very useful topic, and that's probably more like what you will do in 1803, although maybe you actually know how to do it in this case. 
so what we're trying to develop here is a method to figure out if we know what the trajectory is, what the work will be. It doesn't tell us what the trajectory will be. But of course, we could also find that. But here, see, I'm not assuming, for example, that the particle is moving just based on that force. Maybe actually I'm here to, you know, hold it in my hand and force it to go where it's going. Or maybe there's some rail that's taking it on that trajectory or whatever. So I can really do it along any trajectory. And if I wanted to, if I knew that it's the case, then I could try to find the trajectory based on what the force is. But that's not what we are doing here. Okay. So, next. Okay, so let's try to make sense. I mean, you asked a while ago, just a few minutes ago, what, what can we do directly with dr? So dr, c, becomes somehow a vector. I mean, when I replace it by dr dt times dt, it becomes something that's a vector, but with a dt next to it. So, in fact, well, it's not really new, but uh, let's see, another, another way to do it. Let's say that our force has components m and n. I claim that we can write symbolically vector dr stands for it's a vector whose components are dx and dy. Okay. So now that's a strange kind of vector. I mean, it's not a real vector, of course, but as a notation, it's a pretty good notation because it tells us that f dot dr is m dx plus n dy. And so, in fact, we'll very often write, instead of f dot dr, line integral along C, we'll write the line integral along C of m dx plus n dy. And so in this language, of course, what we're integrating now, rather than a vector field, becomes a differential. But you should think of the two as being pretty much the same thing, right? It's like when you compare the gradient of a function and its differential. They are different notations, but they have the same content. Okay, so now, there still remains the question, how do we compute this kind of integral? Because it's more subtle than the notation suggests, right? Because m and n both depend on x and y. And if you just integrate it with respect to x, you'd be left with y's in there, and you don't want to be left with y's, you want a number at the end. And see, the catch is along the curve, x and y are actually related to each other. So, Whenever we write this, we have two variables x and y, but in fact, along the curve c, we have only one parameter. Could be x, could be y, could be time, whatever you want. But we have to actually express everything in terms of that one parameter. And then we get a usual single variable integral. Okay. 